Hi, I'm Ed Bacon, the rector of All Saints Church Pasadena. Whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on the journey of faith, I hope that you'll find something here that speaks to you. Welcome. In the name of the love and liberating and life-giving God, amen. We gather tonight joining our voices with angels and archangels, shepherds, Middle Eastern mystics, Mary and Joseph, to glorify and praise God. We gather tonight to make the incredible and astonishing claim, everyone, unto you a child is born. God has located himself and entered human history not as a principle or as an idea. You cannot kiss an idea, cannot touch it or hold it. Ideas do not feel pain, they do not love. But rather God has become human flesh, a vulnerable child. That child we claim is the light of the world. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. These ancient words of Isaiah are timeless. They spoke to a particular historical time in the life of the Israelite people. A time when things were as bad as they could get for those in the kingdom of Judah. It was understandable as it was tempting for the people of Judah and the king to seek alliances with other neighboring kingdoms so that they can have order, they can assure their safety and peace. They perceived that one must fight fire with fire one must meet power with power. Isaiah understood that this concept of might against might was framed in darkness and offered no real hope or peace for the people. St. Augustine defined peace as the calm that comes from order. To be at peace means that every aspect of our own person and every relationship we have with others exists in living harmony. In such a world, no one is threatened by violence, exploitation, or abuse. No one has reason to fear. I say I would agree. The prophet carries us from darkness to light, from despair to hope, from terror to comfort. He announced that a child has been born for us, a son given to us. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For Christians, this news of rescue comes in the shape and form of a child. This is a single reason for the church is gathered tonight. A child has been born for us, a son given to us. Our Grisham reflects on the goodness, beauty, and hopefulness we see in every infant, baby, or child. He states, somehow we know deep in our bones when we, looked, when we look upon a, a baby, we are looking upon something good, something precious. Grisham goes on to connect this goodness as being very much a part of you and me today. That goodness, beauty, and hope is present in each of us. And in this revelation, 
we come to understand that every person is a word of God to the world. Every person is a word of God to the world. As part of our human experience are moments of despair and hopelessness. Moments in our life when we have exhausted our inner strength and support systems. Perhaps even as we prepare for Christmas, some of us are feeling the darkness which comes from being alone. Some of us may be feeling the darkness which comes from having lost a loved one and not having that person with us this season. Or the darkness which comes from feeling that we never really seem to measure up or are unable to meet our parents' or friends' expectations. Perhaps you and me or others in our midst are struggling with a darkness which comes from uncertainty. Uncertainty about the decision we have made or how things are going to turn out. Some of us may be feeling the darkness which comes from anxiety about life's journey as we become older and we face decreasing health and lo or, or love, loss of independence. Conversely, some of us may be feeling the darkness which comes from having to leave home and branch out on our own to create our own place in the world. Regardless of our personal darkness, we must embrace the light which Christ offers, the light which overcomes darkness and helps us to understand that through Christ Jesus, we are never alone. We are connected to all that is, has been, and will be. And we are all called to love and worship Him in community. The light that is Jesus is with us, a part of us. He is with us even to the ends of the earth. Being the word of God to the world gives us purpose, meaning, a call beyond ourselves, beyond our loved ones, a call that should guide our faith, our choices, choices in life, a call that ensures us that we are forever seeking to turn the human race into the human family. Throughout the Bible, light signifies life, hope, truth, purity, and wisdom. For Matthew, Luke, John, and for us, the light symbolizes God, God's nature, God's divine presence in all the world. Most assuredly tonight, as we celebrate the birth of the Christ child, we understand the light to be Jesus, shining in the darkness. God is not finished with us, and neither is she finished with this world. This world where sometimes there seems to be so much darkness. This evening, I want to remind you that God looks at his creations, you and me, and decides that, that we are the miracles through which God will perform many wonderful signs from heaven. God chooses to bring light, to overcome darkness in the world through us, fallen everyday people. It is through us 
the promised future will come to be. You know, oftentimes with lightness and joy, we often sing as an entrance or exit hymn, the wonderful gospel song, This Little Light of Mine. I frequently wondered if we, really, if we were really connected to the pledge, the affirmation of these words, and if in the moment we understood that at the center of this hymn is our call, our baptismal covenant to be the word of God to the world, our call in the midst of such darkness to be God's hands and feet, to bring God's light to the world. Today, in America, one in five children are living in poverty. The percentage of children living in families below the poverty level has increased from 15.6% in 2001 to 21.4%. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Since the Great Recession began, the number of Americans living in poverty has increased 20% to 46 point million and is growing. All around my neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Six million Americans are incarcerated today and the accelerated rate of incarceration over the past few decades is just as shocking as the number of people jailed. The state of Texas alone has sentenced more than 400 teenagers to life imprisonment. Hide it, on, hide it under the bushel? No. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And in the wealthiest country on the globe, it is easier for Americans to access guns than mental health services. And the rate of inmate, inmate mental illness at 56% is five times greater than in the non-incarcerated population. Jesus gave this little light. He told me to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Now, I could go on and on. I could easily end this sermon framing challenges that we have in our world and our society, but to do so would be to some degree missing the point. For the good news, the joyful news which we are to to so bold to proclaim on this holy evening is that of a God who is not content to leave us on our own world alone and with our own darkness. We have come this evening for many reasons. And I want to believe that one reason is to believe and to receive the light of Christ. So that through our actions, we can be a light to others. For you see, the Christmas season is more than a story of a baby in a manger. It is a light event. My prayer for each of us this holiday season is that we are able to see ourselves as we were as a baby that we are able to understand that the goodness, the preciousness inherent, inherent in all of us at birth remains until this very day. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness on them light has shined. Hallelujah. Merry Christmas.